Yippee. Okay, Welcome everybody to our second um, <laughs> the hot chalks at sea. So um, it's now the 7th of October and start meeting as usual with the declarations of any disposable pecuniary interest. 35322. Thank you. 35422. Apologies for absence, please, Karen. Councillors Brain, Canham, Hodgkinson, Hollis, James. Jeremy. On to the minutes of 35522, uh, the minutes of the meeting held 28th September. Hopefully, you all had a chance to look at them through to page six. <laughs> it was very really happy that they are the record of our last meeting, which was quite a long one, I recollect. Yes. <laughs> So then on to five six twenty two. Well, planning applications. So the first one is A, um, probably taken in conjunction with B. Uh, Barclays Bank, many of you know, is scheduled to close next month. And I think this is just purely taken by all their advertising and internal yeah. arrangements. So, okay. so there's the. Um sure you all know where Barclays Bank is. Mm -hmm. This is where it is. This is the front view at the moment. You can see that they're looking at um, the little, like, I think that's like a locker thing on the left-hand side. It's the windows, the advertising, the um, machine, and um, to go into, oh, a minute. Um, that's the existing rear building. Then you can see all the installations that they're going to remove. So when that has been removed, it will be looking like this. Um, like I said, they're just going to re-brick where the cash point machine was. And at the back, again, all of that is going to be removed. Internally, what they're doing is they're stripping all the bank um, equipment out and it's just going back to blank rooms so um a historic building officer has no objection on the basis that the proposed list of removal of material directly applicable to the barclays fit and use of the building Obviously, we won't support the closure of the bank. I suspect mm -hmm. we probably are a supporter of the <laughs> clearance for the yeah. 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 Yes. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> so, on to C then, 98 Elm Road. So, this is a proposed single story extension. There we have the actual space. Mm -hmm. I hope you've had a chance to have a look at the um, actual plan. So, this is the current status and go on to the next one you can see that they have added the single story to the side of the building so there is no um no comments from anybody at all about it no no residents no i was Christian on the area. Yeah, it's no issue with the garden. It's not a problem. flat roof. It isn't good, of course. Yeah, yeah I think because of the um, window above <laughs> flat roof, necessary because it's falling. So you can see it's just going to be split into basically a bedroom with an ensuite that's going to be in the single storey. As, 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 as far as we're concerned, we already sort of opted in favour of some other established similar extensions on this respect because. That's the tendency you nowadays. People tend to do have their elderly parents or young kids growing up and they're moving out. It's just a kind of house. It's a very good mother. Support them? Yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, D then, um, this is Ben McKenzie. So, this is the direction of a single story mono pitch extension. Following the demolition of the current existing garage and tractable awning, double garage and alteration to driveway. 
So there's the location file. You can see where the lines of the end plot. This is the um, existing. So you can see the plot in this space where the parking and turning and everything is there. And then if we go onto this, you can see where the build is. So the additional build. So on the original one, the one before, that was, yeah, so it's coming into here, and that's where the one is. I love this, the fact that their neighbour wrote in two, so they support the application, because I think it's well designed. So that's a nice positive yeah. change. <laughs> Uh, and highways have no objection, and they have support from their neighbours. And it still does leave a little bit of garden to the side. Yeah, yeah, and they've still got quite a lot of parking and turning there. Yeah. Happy to support. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Run out on more of this little light. Ah, one. I, so, I have. <laughs> I think you were new. So we're going to 35722 late happy. They have Number 1076. Yeah, can I just apologize to parents? These are in numerical order. And uh, you can put them in numerical order. I literally put them on as I got them. Any order. Any order. Do. <laughs> so you can put them in any order you like, Karen. No doubt in numerical order. Yeah. So 1076 is the conversion of an annex and outbuilding to two dwellings and erection of two dwellings with closure of existing fixed access. Creation of a new vehicular access and provision of landscaping. And this is the land to the rear of 57 Berry Road. So I'll just pull that up. So this is the location map you can see in the top right hand corner. That's the area. And interestingly, it, it goes back, and doesn't it? And then it goes into another space behind. So from the road, you can't actually see where the where it goes into. For those that are this is the main one, and that's the very road frontage there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there's an existing small trunk there, um, which I think this has been up before us in the past. Yes. Um, um, we said that it's quite tight side. Yeah, the issue was always about that access, wasn't it? Onto the turning onto the very road. Yeah. yeah. So that's the plan. This is how it's going to be laid out within the um, buildings that proposed uh, as existing at the bottom of the new proposed at the top. So there's um, just an infill on the existing that's not in the top one and the bottom one if there's no change to the external meter it just, just changes internally. So there's several of these, so, so hang on to so your hands. You go back to the original plan just to set up the context where that sits yeah. on it, which is that L trick at the top. Yeah. 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 So there you go. That's that one. Can you see a better on that one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me just check what's in there because I can't read the teeny, 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 teeny writing. Um, on this one, uh, they are ex they where we were worried about the um, going onto the road. What they've done is they're um, expanding the existing walkway, and because we were constantly complaining about the on collision wasn't like that. so. If you can see it. Hi. So at one point we were thinking of access from the very road. And we stopped up with a pedestrian access over the roof. The vehicle access would be from Mill Lane. Right. Yeah. We've ordered up the gateway type entrance there at the moment. We've got you know, increasing the display a little. Yeah. Uh, so that would be the vehicle access. So, that one, so this is um, the actual changes to the elevation of the unit. So there's going to be an extra window. Uh, put in, in the um, back, and there's going to be um, 
I think they're changing one of the doors, the type of doors on the front elevation. So you can see it's going one, two. It's like a stable door, it's a bit of a door. Look on the bottom, I think it's a garage door because it's double hinged. So in total, we're getting this long building converted to unit one and yeah. unit two, and then there are two new builds with the So we end up with four units being serviced by that road. And that's the other one, the, um, and that's showing the inside of the two new. The access to the property is 100% on this one. Um, this one is on this one. 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 I'm just wondering if I build you want to make the L shape. So um, this part, this is the big access. This one the slight widening there. And then you've got your parking outside the new so they are their own parking bays in front of the new field. So they don't park on very road, they park within those bays. Okay. Okay, that's that's fine. So they have where to put their vehicles. There is gardens and all. There's a garden here, a garden there, and a different space there. So um, what they've said about it is that um, they've got to work within the approved agricultural impact assessment area, uh, and there's no objection in broad principles because they had informal pre-application discussions to work out what was needed and and actually naturally said so they've got no objection subject to appropriate mitigation and that um some of that was to um get financial contribution for the Norfolk green infrastructure and recreational impact avoidance and mitigation strategy uh, I mean, it's only 185 pounds, 93 pence per nice. residential development. Um, but uh, yeah, so that'll be going into the right. pot. Yes. But they haven't got any. Um, this bit here is the bin storage. Yeah. All right. I, I can't understand on these drawings here what the difference is what they've done to mitigate that opening. So, so have they made the road wide? I think what they've done is they've widened the pedestrian the so because when you came out of the road, yeah. you didn't have a wide enough vision, display of vision. You couldn't, yeah. there wasn't, you know, it was quite a narrow, yeah. so you virtually had to be out of the road before you could see yeah. what was coming, but now they're widening it out so that you'll be able to see have a wider, you know, a safer range of vision. Along Mill Lane. Mill Lane, yeah. No, that's not this piece. Is that this piece? I went to see it. Yeah, it's not this piece. Yeah, it's not this piece. Yeah, it's not this piece. So, just to answer that, Matt, it says that on the drawing, it just can put way to be the windings to existing wall. Okay. Which is. That's what's in that picture. So, so, yeah. 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 so they're going to take, from what you said there, that wall that we've got on the left hand side is going to go further back, is it? But the to be wide, so up to the existing wall line. So I don't think the wall take it down. Mm. And there's going to be a long way. A bit of scrum there between the path and the wall. Well, the mic is there. Yeah, it's, it's probably there. I think. Mm -hmm. I remember walking a little bit. Mm. Let me discuss this last time. 
we weren't happy with the overdevelopment. We weren't happy with the way onto the Berry Road because it was lethal. And we weren't even, we were less happy about the fact the access onto Mill Lane. Wasn't there some talk about this old church ruins there? Etherida Church? There's a church ruins, yes. That, that was all in the heritage statement, and that hasn't been proven to be an objection. Yes. Okay. Well, I've, I've, we'd like to object because I can't see that. How the traffic because be that, four cars or five cars yes. coming out onto Mill Lane? Because the, the that, heritage statement was actually written by. Richard Hogger, who's one of our leading people, who's the guy who does all the Viking stuff. So, um, yeah, and all of that has been through HBO and then. I think that's the reason there's more that, that um, you're right, it is in Mill Lane. And uh, when they built the new development, I think they, you know, but that's where the Reader Church was. But it could be an overlap onto the site. I don't think there's anything we can do much on, on the heritage side. But the development is, is obviously an objection that we could be traffic problems. Any other comments? Right. So, um, I guess being the new bloke, Carl, we're, I've seen this a few times now when we've talked about overdevelopment, and it's all about where it's in, in the pocket inside a group of buildings that will be there, existing and stuff, and try to squeeze more in. Yeah. And we've in the last two weeks, we've, we've made exceptions for that. Both, um, uh, both because they were, we thought they were overdeveloped. So I don't know, you know what constitutes uh, consistency and what constitutes a change of plan. Do we say we're just not happy with that amount? It's one of those things, overdevelopment is really in your behind you can choose. Somebody, one person will say it's over, others will say well, you have to The thing you is, do. as well, is this is using existing buildings? Yes. So they're not, that is they're, not yeah. they're not putting any more buildings onto the land, they're using the existing buildings. Well, I have no objection to it, I don't think. Or we'll use a bit of land that hasn't yeah. been used for And the last one you were talking about, we were actually putting new buildings yeah, to right. the land. Yeah. As opposed to reusing current buildings. Yeah. So the oh, builders and, and the... Um... What were the existing buildings used for previously? It was a dairy. It was a dairy. Oh. So presumably at some point the dairy had access in and out. Yeah, the roads weren't as busy as they are. Yeah. The cars were a bit no. <laughs> 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 it's nice deposits. Anyway, so Chris is on the deck. Mike's happy. So I think first we'd like to say, Dennis, we need to say, well, you're an objector of support. So can I have a show of hands for the objector? And those for a supporter? Sorry, just to summarise why he's an objector. Yes, mainly the same reasons as last time. I still think the same reasons last time applied. I would be, I'm very unhappy to have more traffic out onto Mill Lane from that. It, I can't say it's good. I'm not in favour of this in the first place. I, I'm not, the, making a the footpath wider. No, I just don't like it. Sorry. <laughs> it's not a plenty of reason, is it? But no, overdevelopment and the highways problem with Mill Lane. Traffic on the Mill Lane is really bad now. It really is, and with the two chicanes, and they're going to come out in between the two chicanes, aren't they? There's cars parked along the mill lane, as we know. Yeah, we've also got two abandoned trailers parked there. Yeah, that's been looked into. She's been, been sent a letter. Two, for two years. <laughs> they, have, they have been sent a letter by Northern. Okay. Yeah. Um, Any more further questions? Before we, because we've got to come there with an objector or supporter. Um, Which comments of why um, any of this sign just so I need to stand out all together. Uh, and Lindry, but I will vote to support. And the reason is because, like Green, Claire said, or Bradley, the building itself, the square footage that's really taken over, is still the same. It's just the disposition by which it's being used inside there's on the change. And providing that they have their own part of the base. Nowadays, I mean, they all have more traffic everywhere. It's just the way things go. If you want to limit uh, people moving into spaces based on two or three more cars, if it's not going to be this this reason, it will be something else. We, can keep, we can't keep blocking uh, development, particularly buildings that are already sitting there. But mm -hmm. for that, I want to support it. 
That's only in support. Show of hands for support. I think my friend will come. The fact that I don't think there was in so I guess, Mr. Chairman, this is my kind of point. You know, do we as a council continually go over, over developed, over developed, and then people ignore us? In which case, there's little point in saying it. So we've got it. But you've also got, yeah, you know, I think we as tank councillors share that frustration over the years. We have had that frustration. That's why we probably don't get everybody attending, was that they, because they do not have any impact. But I think we, as a tank council, owe it to our people who voted for us that we come to a viewpoint. So, and I think, you know, rather than have the attitude, well, we're not making difference, I think we do need to make a stand and say this is what, as a tank council, we're making. Also, we are we're going to do a review of the local plan, and um, a lot of that's going to be coding, isn't it, for conservation and things like that. We're having a conservation appraisal done of the town, and that will give us a strong document in which to plan on put our planning policy on, because it will be an agreed um, approach to it. Yeah. Really, also, you've got to think is if you don't give permission, what happens to that site? You can't develop it and do anything. Well, it just become overrun like the old car wash site, Grove Lane. It's just a jungle, an attraction for rats, and just, you know, a nuisance for neighbours. So, that's, that's, what, that's if not going to give people permission to develop it, what, what do they do with it? Sorry, just one more thing. I think that. Five houses in three square meters is very little. You know, hypothetical. It's what, what we consider an extreme. And also, we have to be set in stone, but perhaps some guidelines if, if we're coming in our own policy, obviously, because <laughs> ultimately, planning and record will decide its own legal aspects whether or not the application goes through. But we perhaps, perhaps for us to guide ourselves and to save us this sort of pulling our hair things. And to be a bit more consistent, in fact, the people represent some guidelines. So, while we think it's adequate, in this case, it's in town. I think there are some resources out there that we could, we could um, pull together to give us a kind of each individual application will be done. Um, yeah. and, and if you do it on you know, per area, sometimes the layout of gardens is such that it goes round and you don't end up with a usable garden, yes, but yeah. you've still got um, an area there. But I think. We, we can have a look at what resources there are out there and give us some guidelines and the extremities because there'll always be the grey area in the middle. And, then, and there are some cases like Max, like, there are similarities in some of the decisions. Some of the developments are similar to one of the ones that have been before, or comes to before. So, uh, provided there's no major differences at all, obviously a new plan coming in that defines things for us makes, it always makes it easy for us because it kind of defines what we can and cannot do. It kind of takes that away from our hands. Um, but still, there's a lot of scope there, how things can be done. And sometimes it really leaves us too much space of scope for us to make a, a reasoned decision, I think. Okay, leave that with me and I'll we'll see what we pull together with Mark. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Just to, I, I can only tell you what Mark had said earlier about the concern that they ignore other developments in the city every time. Well, that's no idea. I think on this occasion we have got to score a small limited victory because. I think in the past it belongs to if we hadn't complained. So that whatever improvements there are are really limited. Is that is why you can take a break. Okay, we'll move on then to the next one, please. So this one is um, 56OB and this is an application to discharge planning obligation to 1386 from 2020. And this is what they're asking to move is to not to commence the development until the affordable housing scheme has been submitted. Um, so what they're doing is um, they're submitting the affordable housing scheme to be approved by the council in writing, and um, and so it won't be unreasonably withheld or delayed, and that the council can agree further variations of the affordable housing scheme following the commencement of the development. Okay, 
So basically, they just want the lay of the land to start off with, on the understanding that there may be a variation once the um, development has commenced. It has commenced, obviously, that people have to see it's uh, in the next. So. I don't think it's the allocation of the... Of the formal housing. Yeah. So this is the plot. Then you've got all the gardens and the public open space, of which there is quite a lot on that development. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's the hands we put in. So yeah, so basically they just want to be able to um, wait until the affordable housing scheme has been submitted and approved by Brentwood. And that's a lot to the back, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yes, four dwellings and three bedrooms. Yeah. 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 So, so plots 12, 13, 14, 14 and 15. Happy seems to be coming on in a reasonable way and um, reusing existing before, so I don't think we can do much other points really on this one. I, I, would, I would be interested to know what the um, what the exit is going to be like. <laughs> well, there is one exit, and that's going to be it's what it is. Yeah. But is it going to be you can turn left or right? <clears throat> Chris? When we first, when this first came up, part of our reasoning was they would only be allowed to turn left. Yeah. But I don't think that ever got put into the conditions. I'm not aware. What? Did you say that only allowed to turn left? Yeah. When they come out of the building, only left. So they don't have to cross the train. They have to go right. What do they do about it? Well, they have to go down and turn around somewhere. You can't have them going across the traffic. There's more traffic through into new towns. Is it a new town or something? Or turn into the chase. Yeah, yes. You can't let them turn it right because yeah, the right. cars come in. We, 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 we stipulated this as part of the reason. You tell me they didn't come put in. I, I can't recollect it coming through as a condition. That hasn't worked. That's not. The thing is, it's not what they're asking for because it's, it's not a normal planning application. They usually turn yeah. one way or another. <laughs> They're asking for us to okay this, that this is um, social housing. Yeah. No, they're asking us to be, to um, not require them to commence the development until the actual um, uh, housing strategy has been approved. Yeah. It's a legal. Jumping exercise. And they'll, they'll, and they'll be allowed to do some variants. So. No, that, that, that's what they want to go with, but they don't yeah. want to commence it until they get the approved. And, and the, so I'll read exactly what it says. Yeah. So it says, so the obligation is to be discharged in full. So that's what they asked for. The obligation is to be discharged in full. And that's what 25% of the units shown as affordable. Yeah. And the open space scheme is to be discharged in full. Yeah. So as you can see it with the private gardens and private spaces. Yeah. So what they're asking the other bit is not to commence the development until the affordable housing scheme has been submitted to and approved by the council. Okay. So basically this is a legal jumping exercise in that they want to not commence anything until they've actually got that back and signed yeah. the council. That's sensible. Um, yeah, that seems straightforward to me. Is there any way at this stage we could just uh, lodge our, our um, thoughts on the turnings out? Not, because this is going to keep getting... Not on this. No. Probably, uh, who's the district councillor for that area? Okay. I'll ask Chris and speak to his or and find out if that's actually in the planning still because he's in a better position to get that information. Okay. The thing is, is once we know, we can always bring it up as an agenda item on planning and and put the proposition to them if you wish to lodge anything then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's still an open scheme, isn't it? Because it's still ongoing. 
Mm. But like, uh, they have permission to deliver it as yeah. plans come to be conditions. Next one. Next one. Only two to go. We're almost there. So, um, so the next one is double one, double one. And this is an amendment to a list of building after the wording of condition four to read no work shall take place to the date placement until precise details. Little, little, little. So basically, this is for 29 Magdalene Street. What they want to make sure is I think we'll find this is our um, historic building officer put a condition in about what had to be used and how what work had to be done. And they've had to change um, the wording as such. And the um, there's no objection from the historic building officer, and he's noted the change in condition and I'm assuming that it's a change in it's just like when we say that they have to use the same or as closely matched as possible. We often put that as a condition on most, you know, say or yeah. Off. So I think it's just enforcing what they have to do. So clients are taking consultation with neighbours prior to the application going in and the neighbours support all the proposals. Do you mind? So I have to ask because you couldn't get any uglier than the existing gates. So anything would be an improvement. <laughs> <laughs> I won't. <laughs> So, um, the yeah. images so they've got to use powder coated aluminium binder bolts, lime plaster to match. Do you get different lime plasters? I thought it was like lime plaster with lime plaster. Yeah. There is a design and access there. Do you want to look at the design and access? Mm -hmm. Well, I think we ought to know what we are. Yes. Let me have a look at I think it's interesting. Actually, I'll be able to probably just show you your good self. So it's Rod Atkins. And and it's just, so we, is it the front yeah. gate we're talking about? Yeah. Okay, the, 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 oh, that's all the blah, blah, propose work to remove and replace the kitchen lean to roof to create an open vaulted ceiling with the addition of three Clement roof lights. But what they actually want to change is um, condition for. Yeah, have a look. If you just go back to this bifold there, isn't there, which is yeah. the condition of three. So it's only four. That's not. The replacement of the third gate was required due to the gate's poor condition will further improve the problems. This is especially reinforced with the addition of the brick pier rebuilding bows an opportunity to use more appropriate soft red brickwork over the current PC brickwork. So this at the side in, in Grove Lane. Yeah, it? so it's about, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, like oh, you say that gate, there, yeah. 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 anything can be improved. <laughs> So I think what they're doing is they're making sure that it's not going to be um, that it's actually an enhancement rather than a... Mm. So the provision of a raw iron gate between the current brick piers will finish the appearance of since the garden gate will be expected to be seen here in addition to improving the general security of the property. And then they talk of... Then there's the yeah. big gate. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Are we happy? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So that's that one. And then oh, I'll go back to me. Let's get rid of that. Back to this. Far too many tabs open. <laughs> so if they only could have gone on to or then just show you where it is on the house, that's not really very helpful. Is it? So um, the last one. So 1086 construction of first floor extension over the existing garage. And this is at four Scott Place. So this is the exil. Got carried away there. This is the, the existing. You can see the garage is there, top left. And then this is the build on the top. So it is literally this piece here. Oops. I need to get a better. Yeah. Yeah, that bit. So it's 
security, one bedroom with one street. Yep. Okay. Okay. That's awesome. At the end of the three five eight twenty two decisions of variance. We did have decisions of variance, and they were um, reference ten Rengate. There's a window. Because we had two, didn't we? Ten Rengate. So eight neighbours consulted and uh, one representative received raising concerns about the use of the gym workshop and they were worried that there was insufficient parking on social hours. However, following correspondence, they confirmed that the gym and the workshop will only be used for personal That's use and a, a condition controlling the use of the gym workshop has been added to the so they've been told that they can't do it. So the Thetford Town Council raised objections on the grounds of overdevelopment. Whilst the extension is relatively large in size, the property is located on a good size block and is of sufficient size to accommodate the proposed addition. So that was that. And then we have window. So other matters, an objection was raised by Thetford Town Council that blocking the front window would not be in keeping of the character of the of conversion area, human conservation area. The site does not fall within the conservation area. And well, overall, I thought I'd um, amend that on the minutes. Because it's one Karen. side of the road to the we other. Yeah, but that, that would have been, remember, I have to put my... Before the minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, the person, so um, because of that, because one side of the road apparently is in the conservation area and the other side of the road isn't. So, um, therefore, the proposal was considered acceptable in terms of the streets. However, they are looking at glazing as opposed to so they go so sometimes there's wins. Sometimes it's worth making the comment. <laughs> <laughs> That's a small victory. That's yeah. the only one you get. <laughs> so on to three five nine twenty two items we refer to Great right. Devon Partnership. We did have a few um, previously we haven't had a GTP meeting. No, we haven't. Just, just before we go on to that, there is actually um uh tree work that's gone through for the front for Stanford because it looks like the beach is gonna have to go because it it's reached the end of its life. However, they are looking at planting a replacement tree. So, but um, we, we often don't comment on these because we have conflicts of interest. Yeah. Yeah. If they look for a replacement tree, do, would we have any say of what kind of tree it is? Stand for, but it will be. It will be. I should imagine we will be advised as to what is the most appropriate. When we the thing is, it, it can't go in where it is because right. the reason the tree is dying is because it's completely surrounded by cement and road and walls and everything else, and it just oh, yeah, course. and it's it's got that tiny little bit of you know green around it, so um, potentially it would have to be another one in the garden. When you say you're not saying you won't get another tree out the front there at any time. Uh, well, it would have to be not one that's going to grow to be no. that big and one that would no. actually cope with the living. We come out the door here on the right. There used to be a tree there. We had to replace one there. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it would be in a similar situation. So but, the thing is, is if you want something to look nice at the front, you would put something there. But actually to replace the tree because of the size and the age of the tree, you're potentially going to have no, to put another one in the garden as well. Very but that is obviously, that's just tree work yeah. that's coming up. Yeah, but, but we don't get to comment on those because of our conflict of interest. But the decision hasn't been through staff to do the replacement yet. No, no. What, what, what we had to do, we had to do is we had to go and find out what the tree officer wants to do with this and whether. So, so we had to get the tree people in and the yeah. tree officer in, and they had to. Just for information yeah. purposes, is the work scheduled to be carried out to bring it down? Yeah. I don't know when we can actually, same as everything we do, we can actually get hold of somebody to do it. Okay. And is that bringing it down to a stump level or stump grinding? Or is it, can, are we left with a bit that we can do like a plant up with some billion coming out? Well? My answer is I don't know. Okay. <laughs> until until he actually comes back and actually comes and talks to me. I don't know. 
but potentially, um, if you wanted it pollarded so that you could do a sculpture, if that's well, what you're ready to sculpture or um, have it at this level and then grow that the middle so you can have it. Yeah, or not. Yeah. 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 Training the yeah. So, yeah, um, the answer is I don't know. Maybe <laughs> just have a chat with Adam about that as well. Yeah. Okay, so that's GTB. I don't think we're coming out of this meeting. That's right. Uh, want to make... No. Because um, they're, they're next week, I think it's in November. It is, yes. So However, this is our isn't that last the... opportunity to get things back. Isn't that when the local plan amendments go out as well? I yeah. think November, isn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, we can put stuff, you know. We can, I'll just think it's their agenda yeah. for November. Because we did, we did put a, um, a letter into them, didn't we, about things we, we wanted yeah, to quite, cover. Quite because I actually had the agenda that was going to happen, which I'm assuming is a public document we can still talk about. So they were going to talk about station enhancement. They were going to talk about um, a, an update from the SUE, um, talk about A11 junctions. Um, uh, that was what was on the agenda before. Oh, I don't know if there's anything else. That was what was on the agenda for that one. And we have spoken to them about putting um, the river and a couple of other things on, haven't we? Yeah. Right, on to 36022. Oh, friend of Barnum Quarry. Nothing further, I suspect. No. Community no. engagement 36122. We need to tell about the tree. We need to say about the tree. So that's that's kind of doctor council. Yeah, okay. <laughs> if I'm still on also that's um say something there. Right. So then on three six two twenty two officers update. Got anything further? No, um, that's all we have. Like I say, but as soon as I get the amendments pushed out for the local plan, I'll share them with everybody. Okay. Right. I, I, I think there's links to um, the latest material planning objection list. What you can cannot use okay. as a yeah. objection. All right. Well, thank you everybody for your attendance and make this right. So we're able to get the meeting done. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, we actually get off tomorrow now. Council staff. Right. So you can actually end tomorrow. Thank you. That's the first. That's come round really quick since the last close one. It may be because we have the the update after the open meeting. Ah. Oh. Following week every time. Ah. Oh. So it does come round quite quickly. Have the open meeting.